Good evening to all of you. Before we start today's session, please feel free to do event check in. This will give you access to additional resources and information about events that we are running on Reactor, which are around similar topics to today's session. Also, you will be able to access links from today's session. I will share the event check in link with the event ID in the QA section shortly. We have launched our reactor group on LinkedIn. Please feel free to join the group to get the latest update about session that's happening on reactor. I will share the joining link soon. Thank you all once again for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. The session will run over the next 120 minutes, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our reactor YouTube channel within three to four days time uh, after the team do a screening uh, of, about the session. Also, I will share the YouTube channel link in the chat section soon. Quick word on a code of conduct. We display this at all Microsoft Reactor events that we run, and it's just a reminder to be aware of others. The key thing to take out here is to be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout, and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Vivek, our speaker for today's session. Vivek is a tech enthusiast and an open source contributor with around 15 years of experience in the software industry. He works at Microsoft as a senior cloud advocate. But for now, I'll hand over to Vivek to begin the session. Over to you, Vivek. Hey, Rishmita, thank you. Thank you for the introduction and uh, thanks all for joining in for uh, Azure Happy Hour. Uh, one more Azure Happy Hour. So this is uh, this is every Friday and uh, pretty interesting sessions uh, happen at uh, Azure Happy Hours anyways. Um, you know, um, I am uh, facing a challenge in terms of uh, network here because of uh, there is some electric work going on um, and in the, in the place where I stay. So um, I'll be going off video uh, so that, you know, uh, off camera basically. Um, just to make sure that um, I am using the full bandwidth for the session. Um, OK, so let me share my screen. Hope everyone can see my, my screen. Uh, that's great. Um, you know, you know, first thing first, um, I want everyone to check in uh, so that you can get access to all the events which we are doing at the reactor and uh, all the you know, activities which we are running at the reactors and, and also the content which uh, we have designed for this specific session uh, is available uh, when you check in, right? So please make sure you do check in. And uh, let's read about today's event. Um, you know, what did you learn? Uh, in this event, uh, it will really help us uh, understand, um, you know, how the audience are learning uh, through these sessions, uh, and that will be a great thing for us as well. Um, and then, you know, uh, there are a couple of content, access to content. Anyways, those things I will anyway share. Um, as Rashmita mentioned, please join the LinkedIn group, and there is Reactor YouTube channel. Uh, please do join in. Uh, there are two sessions which is coming in, uh, which is a follow-up session for this. Uh, I'll just give you a brief of uh, what are those two sessions are for. Uh, that is an Azure fundamental for DevOps engineers and uh, Kubernetes for all, like covering coverage of Kubernetes end-to-end. Uh, -end. Uh, hopefully, I'll we'll be able to cover in, in two hours. So, giving a brief. Um, so last week we did discuss about uh, this specific workflow. Uh, I'm not sure uh, it's visible to everyone. Yeah, now it should be cool. So the, we did discuss about DevOps workflow for Kubernetes in production. So DevOps for all series, uh, we are, you know, this is basically thinking forward. Um, you know, we could have done uh, DevOps series with monolithic architectures and other things which is there, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we 
uh, see forward and, and work towards my microservices or any kind of uh, applications which is running in Kubernetes, right? So this is our goal. So eight part series, um, which is uh, specifically, you know, taking care of how uh, how does a developer work in a Kubernetes dev cluster, and uh, and how does uh, you know code is built and released. Uh, and today specifically, it is about container images and registries and other things. And then we take it to uh, Terraforms and Kubernetes itself. And, and next to next week, uh, we are going to see. Uh, Communities in in detail as well, and then policies and monitoring and other things, which is there, the Prometheus, Grafana, and everything. We will uh, do a deep dive of those sessions as well. So, um, so overall, uh, we're going to cover uh, all of these uh, specific areas in depth. Uh, and today, specifically, I'm covering uh, container image and container registry. Uh, last week. Uh, we did uh, cover DevOps only, so we wanted to define DevOps and what it is, and you know, uh, understanding um, not just the tools which are required for DevOps, but also the uh, you know how culture and people and what all things to do uh, can be uh, something which is there. Any issues? All right. Um, no issues, uh, Vivek, so far. OK, perfect. So this is um, this was the plan and this is this is, this is the whole idea behind the DevOps for all series. And uh, definitely uh, if you go visit this GitHub repo, I have uh, detailed out all the sessions and also what I'm doing is uh, specifically if you go here uh, into that specific uh, thing, I will be posting the resources for that. And, and also recording for that. So both uh, you know, resource and recording will be available with source code. Uh, last week there was no source code, so there was no need to put that. But uh, this 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 week we will have a couple of uh, things and uh, I will definitely post uh, the code and other things and then uh, recordings of this session and all the references which is required and all those things will be posted here. So you can take a look at that. Uh, when you go into the GitHub repo, and this is, uh, anyways, I'm going to post this uh, GitHub repo to you. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, the series. So, you know, coming to today's session, right? Um, you know, you know, everybody talks about containers and why to use containers and other things. I just want to share my experience, uh, how it was, right? So. Um, you know, 15 years back, uh, we were procuring physical servers uh, to host those applications. And, uh, you know, we had some eight applications to host, uh, which was internally used. And uh, and we used to buy some 20 to 30 servers for that, uh, physical servers for that. And we had a room full of uh, server machines and we were going going and installing OS or, you know, I, I don't know, you, you people know about it. It's called ghosting the machine, uh, making, taking a snapshot of the machine and uh, reinstalling the software and other things. So uh, we were doing that. And in fact, uh, and the cost for that and procurement time and all those things in the physical world, right? It's, it was very high. And then came the VMware world for us where there was one physical server and on top of that physical server, we had, um, you know, the uh, uh, ESX, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, ESX uh, APIs and all those things was used by VMware uh, to build the virtualization uh, on top of the physical, big physical server so that uh, we can use one big physical server with uh, various uh, virtual boxes, which is a you know which is a virtualization of the physical server. We use the CPUs and the you know other things which was required, the RAM and other thing, memory and everything from the physical server which was there, right? So, um, given that uh, you know um, the issue here was, say for example, you had five different applications to host and what you used to do is you go on a physical server and spin up five different virtual machines which is having a different oss um, and 
you know you are going to uh, install these applications on these uh, virtual boxes and uh, you know used to run it so each virtual box had its own os each virtual box had its um, you know binaries and other things and uh, had its own issues right because if you have to patch uh, I have to patch all the four uh, virtual boxes and uh, there were so many other uh, issues which you can you know you used to face with VM because packaging was not one more issue right um, because you're going to package it with OS and um, and as a developer uh, if I'm developing on uh, some other OS and then uh, push the code uh, to the uh, production and the production is on some other OS and there is some issues uh, then there is the challenges as well so you know uh, there were a lot of issues in terms of packaging in terms of portability in terms of how the resource management uh, uh, was used and other things uh, then came uh, the containers so the containers uh, were lightweight uh, OS uh, virtualization it was not a hardware virtualization um, it used the kernel of the OS and uh, built the uh, you know based on the libraries and other things it used the uh, you know the OS which is OS libraries and other things to run the applications so but containers were still hard to use um, you know when containers was was there uh, only few players were using the containers and rest of them were still uh, looking at how to use the containers how to uh, it was really up of control and until uh, docker came into picture so docker um, simplified that by creating a layer on top of that uh, which is the docker daemon uh, which is a layer on top of a couple of uh, things which was required for the containers to run right so this is you know this is a, just a background uh, to the containers um, if you want to go in deep dive um, i will definitely suggest a book uh, to read um, uh, just after this session I'll, I'll, I'll definitely share the details um, you know the uh, important thing here is there was physical server there was a VM and there was containers and there was uh, you know they then came the docker right so I see there is a question OK, those so, are no issues, right? Uh, I see that there is a hand raised by someone. OK, just give me a minute. Yes. Uh, what is this? Let me enable this so that it's easy for us to interact. OK, so keep in mind that, you know, you we have, um, you know, physical servers and uh, from physical servers, life was simplified with uh, VMs and from VMs, uh, containers uh, simplified us even much better because of uh, packaging and other things which it which it helped us to do and then the docker which uh, came on top of as a wrapper like the docker commands and other things uh, it helped us uh, to simplify and it, it became seamless like in fact everybody now uh, use docker like uh, you know everyday work kind of a thing right just type in docker commands and keep running stuff on it right so um, so that was uh, the uh, you know uh, background to the containers. Uh, so let me go deep dive into the architectures. And in fact, so I'm going to go um, internals as well. So just uh, give to give a introduction to the architecture. This is this is the uh, architecture which is defined by Docker team, and it's on their website, and you can go and check it out. Uh, they have a client so when you install something uh, from a docker perspective they have a client which is nothing but uh, a wrapper or a cli kind uh, where you are you know um, sending instructions uh, to the docker uh, daemon which is 
which is again um, which is which is a daemon which is running on a docker host uh, what is a docker host docker host is nothing but um, a machine where uh, you have the engine and the daemon or the daemon which is running so which has combination of uh, containers and images and there is a difference between image and the container an image is nothing but um, it's a template uh, to be very honest if you have a uh, if you are from a vm world uh, if you create a package of vm and keep a template with you um, install everything on that and take a snapshot and keep a template with you that's what image is all about and container is nothing but um, and executing um, in VM, right? A VM which is running is similar to what is the analogy for the containers. And registry is um, is nothing but um, you know the manage management of, of these images. So, for example, there is a developer A, and then there is a developer B uh, who is developing. And developer A uh, builds an image, and uh, he wants to share that code with uh, developer B, uh, he would put that image in the registry and um, you know, developer B uh, can consume it, uh, not edit it, but can consume it, right? So that is something which he can do if, you know, the code sharing is not through Git, uh, GitHub repo and other things. So overall, uh, this is how uh, it looks uh, as, a, as a person who is, uh, you know, uh, who is getting started with 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 Docker? You know, it's very simple to understand. If there is a client, uh, which is your CLI client, which where you type in uh, commands and it does talk to the um, Docker host, which is uh, Docker daemon, and then there is registry to uh, host all these images so that it can be shared across the teams and then within your customer as well, uh, etc. So uh, that's the um, that's the main goal of the registry as well. So um, coming to the internals of this, right? So this is very important to understand uh, because you know very um, it very it's very deep in ter in terms of um, how exactly all this fits in, uh, right? So there is client, there is daemon which is running, which has containers, which has images, and and then there is registry. But to be uh, very honest, how it has been layered, you know, there are different layers in the internals itself. Um, so, you know, there is a bit of history to it. Previously, all this was combined, was running as one monolithic um, application. But, you know, over time, um, because of the standards and other things which came in, uh, this was broken down and was made very modular and uh, now it is very modular like uh, now the support for docker and in fact kubernetes removed the docker at the top and just using the container d and run nasty right so that's the um that's the overall uh, you know uh, internals but i let me give you an introduction to this as well um this is pure uh, linux right in linux you have uh, control groups namespaces um uh, and other uh, layers which which you use as an operating system and on top of this there is a low level implementation uh, called run rc it is an open source and you can get the code as well and install on your linux boxes and other and other boxes and then you know try it out as well uh, the run rc is is nothing but a simple uh, simple binary wrapper um, which is which is basically you know the role of that is to start and you know uh, to start a container and how uh, you know it just creates the bundle um, a bundle from the um, you know open so open uh, uh, container in initiatives uh, standard which is that there is a spec which has been released uh, taking that spec, it just creates that bundle. You know, whatever is the, you know, I'm talking about the internals, um, not uh, for beginners who are here. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Uh, most of the things are simplified uh, from the Docker uh, community. So uh, don't worry about uh, if you don't, you know, understand it for the first time. You know, it's even I, you know, there is a lot of things which is there here, which even I don't know. So there are, um, 
you know, there are uh, some stuff uh, which you need to know here just for understanding purpose how exactly the command works and the, how exactly the whole system works. So run RC is just binary. Uh, it takes the bundle. It's a, in a uh, spec which has been uh, developed by the um, you know, CNCF community and it you know, takes that uh, spec and uh, creates a, a, a bundle and uses the operating system C groups, uh, namespaces and other things and then uh, creates the container. So as I told you, the containers are nothing but having its own RAM memory, uh, which is a virtualization. So it's similar to the virtualization world, right? So, uh, but uses the OS uh, kernel uh, to do this. So this is the kernel part of it. And RunRC is the person who is responsible for creating that uh, container. On top of that, uh, there is container D and you can see that here, uh, container D plus uh, run RC, right? On top of uh, run RC, there is container D. So container D is also uh, is also a, a, an open source tool and um, it's, it's basically the role of that uh, container D is to manage the life cycle uh, of the uh, containers, uh, you know, the way containers has to run. We will talk about life cycle, uh, whether to start, stop, pause, and other things. And it is it is not just uh, one role it has. It, the functionalities has been added. A lot more functionalities has been added into the container. D. Previously, it was, uh, you know, it was supposed to handle only the life cycle. But nowadays, it handles uh, the pull requests, the, you know, the image management and a couple of things were supposed to be done, uh, you know, from a execution perspective. So you just need container D and run RC. And if you have uh, a control over uh, the Linux and you, you will be able to run the container ecosystem as well. Uh, on top of that, um, Docker engine sits there. So um, Docker engine or the Docker daemon, which is which is called as and uh, it is it is more of uh, managing the um, API layer and network and plugins which is there uh, live uh, lib network. We're going to talk about lib network as well. Um, what are the components of it and other things when when we come to Docker networking, but. Uh, there are different pack, you know, things which uh, which is available out there, so you can package it and uh, make use of that as well. So overall, if you see, there are three layers. One is there's the operating system. On top of that, run RC, which takes care of uh, which takes care of creating the container, and then there is uh, container D, which is responsible for managing the lifecycle of the uh, container, and then there is Docker engine, which is uh, which is for network and plugins and uh, you know API layer, which is there, uh, the REST API layer, which is there, which is also connecting to a lot of other things like uh, registry and other uh, Docker client, which is which is the most important thing as well. So um, this is the internal uh, part of the Docker, and uh, coming to how it works, right? So it's you know, it's very important to understand. Um, how it works. Uh, let me. Can you see? How it works OK, so. Um, you know, um, if I give that command, which is which is from the CLI, which is the Docker client, uh, I do, you know, click you know, give the command, which is Docker container run something uh, from a name and it's an Ubuntu and latest and uh, the bash is the uh, default entry point. If I do that, right, uh, what happens in the background, right? I just, uh, I've just broken down into some steps there. Uh, one is Docker CLI talks to Docker D, which is the Docker daemon, which is the REST API layer, right? So this is the layer, which is the REST API layer. And then, uh, from the daemon, uh, daemon talks to container uh, container D and handovers the information. This is what uh, the user has requested, and this is what I want to do. And container D uh, talks to run RC uh, to create that container through that using that image, uh, whichever the information has been provided. As I told you, there is a spec, so it creates a bundle. Container D creates a bundle and handovers the spec to 
um, to the uh, run rc and run rc creates that uh, run rc creates the bundle so the spec is handed over hand over by the container d right and then uh, once it is done once the run rc has executed the you know create uh, containers right it has uh, created containers uh, it gets deleted right? it gets existed right so uh, the reason for that is we can create more more uh, instance of run rc uh, that is the reason why we can create more containers and more processes um, you know it just creates one process run rc and then handovers that to uh, shim shim is nothing but uh, a manager it's a parent uh, process it run rc handovers the details of the executed container to shim uh, so that shim manages the whole container uh, which is nothing but it is it is keeping the pipe open the standard in and standard out for that container is open and it is reporting the status uh, to the daemon about what is the status of the container so the reason for all this is if you update the daemon if you update the uh, daemon version or anything right um, the containers are still running there is you know this is the problem if you had created everything in as one bundle uh, the reason why this has been broken down into different uh, you know different parts is is because uh, you know we want to understand how uh, we can use it in production right so this is in production um, shim is always having the information about the container it is running it is keeping that alive and it is also reporting the status uh, and daemon might get updated uh, because of various upgrades and other things and then still uh, it can talk to the uh, container which is running and there is no disturbance to the container and we can have more instance of run rc uh, when uh, when there is a request for uh, more number of containers come in so more uh, you don't have to run more process of run rc uh, it handle handovers to the parent um, and our parent process and just runs it right so this is how exactly it works and um, for new uh, you know for beginners don't worry even for you know advanced things it is it is not so important because just understand this has already been there it's already running for you and uh, all these four uh, four things are running docker daemon container d um, and uh, the shim and the run rc is all you know it's already running and uh, for you it's it's just that command is what uh, is more important for you and then there is container life cycle uh, as i told you right so there is um, in interesting uh, thing about container life cycle is uh, which is managed by by the uh, container d which is create docker run running and then there is remove and then stop and then pause and other things we have we will obviously work through a couple of commands we will see a couple of things we will build some um, you know docker files and we will you now we will run a couple of commands for networking and other things in in next few sections but just understand there is a life cycle for it um, you can create it you can restart it you can run it and stop it so images and containers right so uh, understand uh, the difference between these two um, very important um, this is a template this is uh, an executing uh, executing template right which is vms which is executing vms which is uh, where you have taken snapshot or created a snapshot and you're just hosting it out there right so uh, that's 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 the uh, introduction to docker architecture so i just want to go uh, deep dive into commands just before i go deep dive into commands uh, all this information all you know all these readings are available uh, on the you know microsoft learn module introduction to docker containers uh, there is an amazing learn module which is there which is uh, five to six units which is that if you read this uh, you will get a complete understanding of uh, how exactly this uh, you know uh, docker containers work and also there is learn module on uh, build a containerized web application which is which is part of the thing which we will also do it right now and um, you know uh, as i told you right there is 
scaling challenge which I'm running, which has all these learn modules as well. So that's uh, that's one of the thing which I just wanted to call out so that you go back and uh, take up that cloud skill challenge so that you get all these learn modules handy because I've created that bundle for you and you can uh, complete each of these learn modules and uh, understand this in uh, detail. So let us go back and see, you know, uh, Docker command, right? So uh, we will see it on the terminal, right? So that's that's better. So okay. So I have installed Docker, and uh, you know, once you install Docker, there is client and there is uh, server. So if you go and type Docker version, right? So you get um, details about your client and uh, let me reduce this screen. Okay, so you get the details. Of Vivek, we can't hear you. Ah, uh, yeah, there was some network issue. Yeah, yes. <laughs> now we can hear you. Yeah. I'm really sorry for today's session. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I hope you can see this now. Um, my screen is visible for everyone. Yes. Yes. Sure can see yes, I can see. Okay. Okay. So this is um, you know just the Docker version command which I had given. In just in case we lost. Uh, is just the version command and you can see the server and the client details uh, both available. Um, that's something which uh, you will get once you install the uh, Docker desktop is also there on top of it, but I don't want to go in depth with that. It's just I'm just talking about uh, these two things as of now. Um, so, uh, you know, there are, if you go and type in Docker help, right, you get one job. Um, commands which is available for you to run. Um, so there are well known commands which is required for uh, executing various things and uh, there are commands which you might not use every day, but sometimes um, you know it's it's required to understand all these commands as well. You know, that, uh, for example, Docker scan, which is for scanning and security purpose and other things and secrets and other things which is required. And there are other things which you use on a daily basis uh, would be the uh, pull, push and other things. Anyways, we're going to see all of those uh, which is required uh, from an execution perspective. So let us go back um, and build an application, uh, uh, take an application and uh, just do a simple dockerization of that application and then you know um, let us build it and then we're going to push it to a registry and we'll understand different types of registries as well and after that we'll get into the networking part of it right so the process uh, to build a docker file is uh, pretty interesting right when this docker file is nothing but uh, all the required uh, things which is from running an application you are documenting it um, and you are uh, creating a that docker file what is that um, you know application requires and OS, which is there which is a base OS uh, libraries and other things and probably the package or the you know the other dependencies which are required uh, those are the things which you're going to add into the system and the rest of those commands which are required to execute. Uh, so see that, you know, it's Docker file. If you have the Docker file, um, anyone can build uh, on their system and start using uh, the image. Uh, you know, that is the beauty of uh, Docker, right? The packaging. Uh, we used to have a lot of issues in, in the packaging itself, right? Uh, if I package something um, in, uh, in a, you know, you know, in a Linux box, in a different path and other things. And the same code is being taken by the developer, changes the path and does something and he, you know, he tries to run it and it fails. 
so there was very difficult uh, situation for us to uh, debug all those things right so that was the issue uh, pre docker era and now it's easy where there is one standard template uh, which is the docker file where you have uh, keyed um, all the required keywords uh, to build that uh, specific application and you are taking that uh, docker file and uh, putting it in the uh, image uh, registry or anywhere and then using it uh, in terms of uh, execution right so while building docker file uh, there are various commands uh, sorry there is um, you know the uh, keywords which you need to give which is also called as commands within the docker file uh, which is um, specifically uh, the, it's, it has a bunch of uh, you know commands right so it's not just limited to this uh, if you go to the uh, link which i have provided there uh, there is there's a lot of other uh, commands as well and it is evolving every day and couple of things i have noted down here uh, for us to understand uh, is the add uh, basically to uh, copy files from your local system to container file system uh, each container has its own file system as well so uh, containers uh, when they it's been up uh, with the uh, run rc it creates a you know uh, it creates a, a specific uh, section where uh, the cpu the ram the space required uh, is being uh, virtualized as i told you the first first diagram itself uh, it is a operating system virtualization tool right so it is you know virtualizing the operating system not the hardware itself so um, so add is something uh, which is, which you use to copy file from one host to other host and cmd is a you know it's a command so if you want to execute something and it's only one you can use and you can uh, you can also you know override uh, the command uh, through the docker command which is there so that is something which uh, which can be done through cmd and then there is entry point every every uh, docker um, you know a container which is running containers um, have a default entry point say for example uh, as i showed you that ubuntu latest uh, thing which uh, we which we were uh, discussing if i run that um, there is the default entry point is always bash um, so that is the uh, uh, that is the main purpose of entry point entry point can only be written and it's basically uh, acts as a you know even the command uh, acts as a uh, and you know command provides an input to the entry point so you are keeping an entry point as an executable and then command uh, gives information what needs to be executed with the executable which is the entry point right and then there is environment variables and then expose expose is nothing but you're exposing port which is networking and other things um, we will see that in in the networking part as well and from is very interesting from is the base layer which is there so you need to understand uh, there is a base layer there is a different layers which is there and uh, where um, you know while building the image image is nothing but layers i'll show you uh, that in the example where while we are building it and then there is run and um, maintainers maintainers is just giving the name for the maintainers and then there is run run is nothing but executing commands and uh, user ids is, is to set up the user ids and other things for, to make sure that you know which as which user you want run volume is nothing but the storage uh, for uh, which storage you want to use working directory is the current working directory uh, from where you are uh, running this specific uh, you know commands uh, where you are setting up in within the container which is the you know working directory and uh, and then there is label just to uh, track the docker images you can add some labels to it there are a lot more uh, things which you can do and uh, very interesting you need to understand how to do the uh, docker files and how to design docker files there are a couple of examples uh, i will add it in my github repo um, there are five to six um, examples which uh, i'll just post it out there um, and uh, we will see that but uh, as of now we will go back and design an application build an application do a uh, build a docker file for it and other things 
Uh, I'm taking Spring Boot, uh, Spring Boot application. So for Spring Boot, it's pretty easy. Uh, just go here uh, into the start.spring.io, which is there here. And you can um, take a Maven project, take a Java, whatever version you are looking at and provide all the information which you're looking at and add dependencies here and just generate. It generates a specific piece of code and you can uh, download the specific piece of code. Okay, so uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, you know, if you are, um, you know, if you are a beginner in Spring Boot, uh, this is where uh, you start and uh, you will understand how easy it is to uh, build a Spring Boot application, basically used for building uh, amazing microservice applications uh, using Java, right? So this is something which, uh, you know, which you can uh, drive. So basically I'm, I've used JAR and uh, Java 8, uh, specifically Java 8, because I want to show you something uh, very beautiful. Um, let me go back. And so when you do the generate, it will generate a file for me. Okay, when I go and click on generate here, um, I've already given all the default names and you can see uh, I can download the file and it's it's a zip file. So when I uh, go here, you can see I've already downloaded it and I've already unzipped it. So this is the file which uh, which I downloaded and this is the folder which is there. So if I go to the VS demo it's all the code uh, which is required to run a simple um, simple microservice application is available for me so what i'll do is i'll just show you um, how this has been designed uh, just for the time uh, i have created a couple of things so let us do it again so this is a spring boot application uh, let me Go back to this. Okay, so where is it? Okay, so this is a you know Spring Boot application I have, and I have given all the required inputs, and this is my you know uh, this is my microservice app. So the code here is get map slash messaging and this is what I've given, and this is the main thing which it gets executed, and this is the class name which is getting executed, right? So let me go back here. Oops, there was some power cut. Sorry, folks. I guess you still see my screen, right? Yeah, yes, Vivek. Uh, okay. This is good. I'm doing a demo in a very dark room. <laughs> okay, so welcome to Spring Boot uh, and the dark room. <laughs> so this is um, so I've uh, you know uh, this is a simple message, uh, an API which I'm building, which is uh, could be a simple microservice. Uh, you know you can add it here. So I'm just. Uh, putting that information here and then let's save this and uh, I have edited the POM file. Uh, if you're from Java world, you will understand the, you know, the POM file and other things which is there. Uh, I've added the, uh, I've added the file name VS demo, uh, which is the name which I had given uh, while downloading the application. So this is, uh, this is something which we have. And uh, then there is Docker file, right? And uh, I've created a Docker file. Uh, this is how you can build a Docker file. If you see this, uh, you can either create via the from base image, uh, base image, are nothing but already official images, which is already there um, on the Docker Hub, uh, the default uh, registry. Uh, we will talk about Docker registry, uh, Docker Hub registry. Uh, and in, in just uh, some time, but keep in mind there is uh, official uh, registry which is out there uh, and you can uh, download things from this official registry and you can also have uh, your own uh, public, uh, you know, your own uh, 
private registry uh, which is hosted within your ecosystem within your uh, tenant uh, to be uh, to secure all the images which you have and also you can have uh, you know you can use uh, the public cloud uh, registry which is also uh, private and it is within the uh, tenant is just that managed by the um, managed by the uh, cloud providers and not the uh, not you are man or you are not managing it if if you want to manage by yourself uh, you can just go there and uh, manage it uh, on your own creating a private registry for yourself right so um so this is this is the from uh, and from Vivek, can be, yeah. i'm sorry i think a few attendees they are saying this there is some delay uh, with the voice and the screen so is it better right now? I mean, uh, okay, let me just, you know, give the mic to everyone in case if you have something, you can just unmute and, you know, let Vivek know one minute. I'll just give, but requesting all of you to keep your mics muted if you don't have anything, any questions. Okay, so mic has been enabled to everybody. OK, so Vivek, you can continue in case if anybody is having any issue, probably they can just stop you. OK, so. Um, so from can be um, we can also have base image from the from the Ubuntu or other uh, operating systems as well, but uh, for this specific one, uh, I'm just using the Open JDK, and by default, it is always uh, the core OS, right? So uh, it uses the uh, default one, and uh, from uh, Open JDK, uh, I'm creating a uh, from that base image. Uh, that is one of the layer in the in the um, in the image uh, description. So while we build the image, you can see uh, at the bottom as well, there are a couple of layers which gets still, you know, created. So this is one of the layer. Um, and and then there is expose. Uh, we did talk about expose. Expose is nothing but um, within the container, I'm exposing AT, AT um, to be, uh, you know, uh, where I can connect to the uh, external uh, external uh, external network right so it's not the uh, within the uh, within the container network it's it's about external network from containers to connecting to the external network how do i do that uh, i need to expose my port and once you expose your port the externally we can connect to it we will see that uh, where it works and then uh, I'm, I'm just writing a simple docker file here it is it's about uh, copying uh, the jar file which is there into the uh, containers and then uh, and then just uh, executing it i've just given an entry point here but you can override uh, through the command as well when we execute it uh, i see that there are a couple of um, questions uh, where you know what is the difference between command and run uh, so command is nothing but um, you know you are uh, where you can override a uh, couple of um, execution uh, say for example um, i say let me put it here cmd uh, cmd executable i will say echo um, echo something uh, say we can add echo hi vivek while i execute uh, execute this docker um, you know if i go and say docker um, you know docker container run uh, something something um, the name of the container uh, spring container and other things and then provide the command like echo high uh, reactor uh, the output would be high reactor not the high Vivek, it will override. But the command are nothing but, you know, the run command is nothing but you are running uh, specific commands uh, within the, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, you're not changing anything at the runtime. Uh, so that is the whole thing. So run is just run um, a binary, execute a binary, or run some, um, and run some command, 
uh, where you require some uh, script to be run or something like that. So that's where it comes in. So uh, I'll just build a simple, uh, you know, Docker file uh, from a DevOps perspective. Um, you just need to understand all these things uh, more and more. Uh, you are involved. It's more into the management of these things um, than the uh, writing these things itself, because most of the, these things uh, will come from uh, the developer and then uh, you know, designed by the definitely designed by uh, DevOps team as well. So um, I've given the POM file details. Uh, I have the uh, you know Docker file. Uh, created, I have the code which is changed, and and what we need to do now is uh, go back and build it, right? So what we will do is even before we build it, we did change the code, and this is already built, and this was built uh, just before uh, doing the demo. So um, there is some you know uh, things which we need to do, right? What is that? MVP, uh, sorry, MVN install. Right, so uh, where uh, we are just recreating the things um, that is just recreated because it was built already. I hope uh, it's getting built, it's testing, and then build success. So now there is a new code which has come in, and uh, we have uh, this is this is Java. This is Java build. It's not the um, Docker build. Uh, let's go back now and do the Docker uh, build, which is there. Um, so we just need to do the Docker build. So we had built a Spring Boot demo version two, or version one. We will build it to version two. Okay, so. It's on the same folder, same folder where the Docker file is there. So we will just go there and build it. If you see this, right, it is pretty fast. The reason for this is, uh, if I go to Docker image, image, images, right, you can see that there is already Open JDK 8 version there, right? So since this is already there, uh, there is no need to re. Uh, you know, rebuild or re-download this specific uh, image. So it is. It is all since it is already there. It will not rebuild it. So that is the advantage of having uh, Docker with images within the layers, right? There is different layers uh, which is which is available for you, and these layers gets downloaded uh, as part of images. And when these the layers are uh, downloaded. Um, when you reuse it in different, you know, different uh, code, and you are using reusing it, it it always verifies whether this specific, uh, you know, image ID and specific image is already there on your system. If it is already there, then it reuses all those things, right? So that is the advantage. That is the reason why I wanted to uh, add that from from OpenGDK 8 uh, because it was already there and it didn't download right now. OK, so um, just understand now uh, we have version two and you can see that there is different ID. So there is a different ID. Uh, this is version one and this is version two. And just before I forget, uh, this is the command to build it and this is the template. Uh, the, the path where I'm using it is dot here and this version two is nothing but tagging. Right, so there is a uh, version two, uh, which is nothing but a tag. Uh, you need to tag. Tag is not always, uh, you know, it's not always the truth. There is something called as uh, SHA digest as well. So it is something, um, you know, it is something which is, uh, you know, it's always available for uh, you to use it uh, directly uh, so that you can have a single point of truth. Uh, if you're using version two, uh, 
is basically you know which version to you know which version to build and pull and uh, execute right so if you're pulling this image you should know uh, that version 2 is is something which is available out there okay so let me go back and uh, so what we are going to do now is we did have a code uh, we did uh, we did uh, you know have a java code and we took the java code and we created an image and from that image, um, you know, what we need to do is we need to push it into a registry. So let me come back uh, to the registry discussion again. So, you know, registry uh, is nothing but a repository to host images. There is there is a public um, Docker Hub, and there is a private um, there is a private um, you know where you can own it, where you can manage it on your own and you don't have to um you know you don't have to manage uh, sorry if you don't want to manage then you can use the cloud providers azure like the azure container registry where you can host the images again this is again within the tenant within the closed um, closed uh, loop so that you know there is a security enabled on top of this and then um, Docker Hub is obviously uh, it has both uh, official and unofficial, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, images available as a registry. So as I told you, images are nothing but a template. So it is available out there, and you have to download the template and run it. So that is what the is called as containers. When you run it, it is called containers, and when you have the template, it is called images. Uh, just keep that in mind. So now we have. Uh, we have the uh, image, so I'll go to my VS Code and Docker plugin. I have a Docker plugin, and I'll see we did build version two, and we will take this version and push this version to the registry. So I have already created a registry uh, in the uh, Azure Container Registry. Uh, which is which is already there and it's pretty easy to create let me show you once i release this or push this code so i'm just pushing it so it's uh, it's terminology to push the code to some place right so it is easy to understand so i'm just pushing that um, i'm already logged into my azure uh, Azure uh, portal, so that is the reason why uh, the, it did not ask me to, um, you know, it did not ask me to log in. Uh, if you are first time using it, uh, it would ask you to log in. Let me go back and to come here. So let us go here and create a resource. Um, containers and then there is container registry just click on create and what you need resource group uh, my internet is slow so please bear with me okay uh, there was for all i'll give us some name for it um uh, say it's uh vs demo two and then there is not central it's fine standard these are you know your plans and if you are looking for public endpoint and other things and if you're looking for encryption uh, so that whenever you are pushing the image it is encrypted whenever you're pulling it is encrypted and that is you know a couple of things which is there and just review and create. So you just review and create, um, you'll, you'll get a container uh, registry created for yourself. And you can see here, I've just gone to all resources and these are the resources which I have. I'll go to container registry and you can see that the container registry is available, right? Before anyone can use it, before internal, you know, to be able to use it, uh, you can go to access keys and and enable admin use. 
you know, it is to make sure that within the, um, you know, within the Azure ecosystem, if uh, if you want to use uh, the Docker, uh, the sorry, the container registry, the image, uh, you need to provide this uh, enable this. A specific admin user okay and there's um, already repositories and i've already uploaded a couple of them uh, you can actually see that sorry for the network today there's some issue there is one which is only version one is there. I don't even have version two yet because the layer is just still pushing it. Uh, this is still going on. Uh, I'm just waiting for version two. If I refresh this, yes, I got the version two. So if you see, if I refresh, I got the version two here. And um, now I have version two of the spring uh, code which we had right and this is how it is right so it is it's available right now on registry the image is available on the registry code build it use docker file docker file has so many things uh, i've just shown you a simple example it's very simple example basically uh, it's it is quite complicated if you have to build it for production and other things and once you do that you know, we will see that uh, when we do the last session where we are bringing all of this together uh, to build something uh, for communities, right? Where we have all this stuff uh, ready. So version two is up now. We will, we will have this. And uh, so version two is there. And after this, what we will do is we need to push this code um, to the cloud, right? The code, we need to see what's running on the code, right? Well, we need to see the Docker running. So what we will do is we go here and create a container instance, um, create a container, Azure container instance, and we will see steps are almost same. Um, I'm just choosing this container name. You give a container name, VS Demo 2, and you choose the container, Azure Container Registry. So you can either choose your own or Docker Hub, as I told you, right? Uh, a container registry it can be anything, the image registry or image repository it can be anything. Yeah, I'm just choosing Azure Container Registry because it's easy. Um, and I have version 2. I'm, pushing version two uh, of the same um, image and uh, the code changes which we had. And then, uh, you know, you want to make it uh, public or private what it is. And I can say VS demo. Um, instead of VS demo, VS is enough. No, VS demo two. This is available and this is where the expose you know the expose command comes in 8080 uh, is what uh, was exposed by the uh, container when when we run the container and i just want to map it to the same port um, let me map it to the same port and put that 8080 here and then go this is one more uh, important concept of uh, containers where there is a policy. This is majorly used with Kubernetes. I will, I will talk about uh, this uh, when we use uh, this specific thing with Kubernetes and other things. So definitely we will go back and do the stuff. Um, this is on failure always, never, and all those stuff. And we will just copy the command which is there. Um, I just want to make sure we run through command as well. Uh, just putting it here. And that's it. So we go here and review and create. So we create a container instance as well. Uh, so what we what we have seen now is um, Docker image command, uh, Docker, uh, you know, we didn't see Docker pull and push. Basically, we use the 
uh, you know, the Docker uh, plugin, which is there for VS Code. Um, so you can also use through command line as well. Um, if you go and, um, sorry, help, um, you can see uh, there is a pull command and some of the options where you can provide. And also there is Docker push command where you have some of the options enabled, right? So you can see those as well. So it's pushing is nothing but you're pushing to a repository, you're pulling, you're pulling from a repository. Uh, that's the easiest way to understand this two commands. And we saw uh, Docker version command and we saw Docker container run. So the container run anyways, we're going to use it with um, with the network policies. So just give it a minute. So let us create. So I've already created one container instance or so while this is getting created, you know, I can show you what it is. Uh, when, it, when it creates, um, Okay. Let me go here. While it is creating, let me copy this and this is the ID eighty slash message. So this was the API, right? The slash message was the API. This is this is the old version. Uh, this is the old version of the code. Uh, this is uh, something which is there and let us wait for this one to get deployed. Once it gets deployed, VS Remote 2 is it deployed? Okay, it says it's completed. I think it's still going on. Let's wait for it to deploy. Um, okay. Now, let me try it out. If it is deployed or not. So the same code, but there's some change in the text, right? So hopefully it will, yeah. So, so the version two came just came in here, right? So. So it was very simple to build this out. Uh, what we did was very simple steps. Um, code was there from Spring Cloud, Spring Boot, so the Spring Boot uh, app, which is there. Uh, we took that code, we made some edit to the code, and then we built the Docker file for it. Uh, the Docker file again. You need to understand different uh, different things in the Docker file. Please go to the reference link which I gave. Uh, you need to understand each and everything there to make you know to build uh, expertise within the uh, Docker file building it. So it's all about building the Docker file, right? So once you build the Docker file, everything is simple. Um, all we did was build. Uh, we used Docker build command. Uh, Docker build command. Uh, to build the code, uh, to build the image, in fact, uh, which is which is called as image in, in the Docker world and the containers world. Uh, we did after the image is been built. What we did, we did push uh, the image uh, to the registry. Uh, how did we do it? We either we can we could use it the VS Code or we can use the um, you know the Docker CLI, which we saw, uh, it's very simple. Um, and then the code is up there and uh, it is running. So we uh, we use the Azure uh, Container Registry to host it, and then we use the container instance to run the code and see how, you know how it is executing and stuff like that. It's kind of a production kind of a thing for that specific uh, code which we had. So um, given that and now uh, we have uh, almost have everything. So let me also show you a couple of things. Docker pull, right? So we can pull uh, from 
uh, the registry. So we can go there and use the registry code. Go here. Oh, I need to log in here. So instead of this, I can show you from here. It's easier. So this is Azure. Um, I haven't logged in through CLI. So I'll just show you from the VS code itself, which is pretty easier as well. So just go here, Spring Boot, Spring Pre-Demo. It will show me the version one and two. And here is version one and two. So what we will do now is we will use um, Docker images. Ah, so my mistake. That. Docker images. I'll just type in Docker images. Um, Okay, and once I do that, um, I will say check what is running. That is Docker PS. PS actually shows list all the Docker's which is there, um, and then uh, PS hyphen A, which will give you all the all the images which is running. So that is one, and then we will see Docker remove image if i want to remove a couple of images from this uh, file i just want to go there and pick the image id and just remove it uh, it might say delete must be forced because there is one more uh, which is there right so force okay so now i have Remove that, I believe, Docker images. So I've just removed the version one, which I had. So it's it's a simple command, Docker RMI, which is nothing but remove, um, and I removed it. And um, you know the reason, you know the I just want to make sure I pull the image from the registry instead of having it here. There is nothing I have now. Uh, I want to have the image i'm just pulling it from the registry so i'm just going here this is in the azure registry so i'll go here i just click on this and pull image and it is executing this command so you see this uh, this is a command this is my docker registry uh, that is my Docker registry details and then the version two. Oh, I did pull the version two. Is it? Oh, shit. Let us pull version one as well. Okay, so I'm pulling version one again uh, so that you now we deleted version one. So, um, so yeah, because it's pulled for the version two, the version one is already existing. Anyways, uh, if you see this, right, uh, this is the path to my registry. So obviously I could have done it through CLI. I could have logged in uh, to Azure, uh, Azure CLI uh, login and then used that. Uh, I would have easily pulled the image as well. So I'm just using this because I've already logged in. Uh, Docker images. And you can see version one is here. So all I need is Docker images, and you can see the version one is here, right? So uh, these are the, some of the commands which we used. This is a basic command, right? Docker image um, on a day-to-day -day basis, Docker images, Docker pull, push, build, um, you know, versions and other things which we are going to use. But, um, you know, we need to understand how networking works here, right? So there is there are some important concepts around networking, and uh, we will see um, how exactly it works. There is a specification, there is an open source specification for uh, network uh, networking as well. So there is container network model, which is also a specification. So you can see that here, um, and this is nothing but an Docker 
used this specification, this design specification, and they built a lab uh, network, right? So, uh, which is out there. So I did show this in the one of the diagram where um, Docker Engine had this uh, lab network. This is to manage the network. So every time you build a container, every time a container uh, is running, uh, it has a sandbox, isolated network stack for itself. And there is an endpoint, virtual Ethernet uh, interface with uh, IP tables and all those things added to it. And then there is network switch, which is the virtual switch for it uh, to connect to it and other things through a driver. By default, right, in, in Linux, there is uh, bridges, overlay, and uh, Mac VLAN uh, drivers uh, available. Uh, this is shipped by the Docker itself. So Docker is shipping this. Uh, all these different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, you know drivers. Uh, this is Linux specific. In in um, in Windows there is NAT, uh, there is transparent and other things uh, for various other uh, drivers as well. And then we will see. Okay, so there are a couple of things we are going to do now. Uh, let us create a bridge. You know, as I told you, you can have uh, by default there is bridges there can be a uh, single uh, single bridge or a user created bridge there is a default bridge and there is a user created bridge so every time uh, you have let me show you the command where is the command line okay okay so if i go and i docker network ls so there is a default bridge which is already available Okay, so this default bridge, uh, whenever you create a Docker um, container, which is running container, it has a bridge, it is attached to a default bridge. And um, through this is where the uh, the expose command, you know, the expose command which we used, uh, you know, for uh, exposing AD, ADAT port uh, for the, uh, from the Docker file uh, is working. And that is how it is. Uh, you know that is how we are able to connect to it or that is how we were we are able to map to it so this is this is a simple uh, network which is already there by default and people use it directly and as a user i can create my own as well so we'll go back and uh, create a new one uh, we will create a new bridge um, bridge is nothing but a driver so i'll say local install local network network created locally right so we create that and it gets created so if i go back and say the network ls i can see uh, there's a network created so this is very simple you know it's a it's a network it's available for you and as i told you right the three different things which is there uh, for everything, there is a sandbox. Within the sandbox, there is an endpoint and there is a network, which is this is what we created. Now we need to attach the, uh, you know, we need to attach the container to that, right? So simple. Uh, so there is network which we created, virtual switch, which is the bridge, and then there is container which we need to attach. So we'll run two containers. Um, so this is a simple container. Uh, with network attached so and let me it's a sleep container so it will just sleep for one day and it will keep running for one day so we will say the network name is network created locally and just execute this so this container is running now and you see this this is a new command which we are using right docker container run command so there is a docker container command as well uh, which is for running and managing the containers and stuff like that uh, uh, there is container 2 which we are running um, Let me go here 
and say net work created locally again and we had run container 2 and it is named as container 2 as well and it is running so now what we will do is i'll just clear this one and see what our containers are running so this is the command which i showed you the other time so can uh, docker ps it shows two containers we are running and it was just created now and uh, there is no port attached to it it is just a simple container uh, attached to a bridge and you can use um, network inspect for uh, for created locally uh, if i do an inspect it gives you all the details about the uh, network which is there and it it shows me couple of things information um, and it is showing me the containers which is attached to it right the name of the container and the endpoint and IP address and there is name of the container to uh, endpoint and other things so inspect is basically uh, giving you an information around how the network um, you know uh, how the network bridge is working i have just created a bridge my own bridge it's not the default bridge which is available uh, that is that is anyways will be used uh, for various activities we do right and this is something which is a network bridge which we just created right so that's one and we have it right now which is up and running and you know we will see now the the most important thing here is um, how to connect to the uh, container so how do i log into a container container is again a virtualized kind of a virtual machine right so you log into a container so this is the command usually when you use container uh, docker container run with this um, i you know interactive mode which is the hyphen it uh, you can actually log into the container we'll see this now i am logged into the container so if you see if you see this right it is logged into the uh, container uh, which was there and this is the container 2 which is there and i can ping the container 1 from here so i can connect to the container uh, 1 and then we can just go and i can just stop this uh, so basically if you see this um, container 2 and container 1 uh, were using commonly using the bridge which I have created and I had attached to these uh, containers. Now, if I attach um, container three to a different bridge, um, I will not be able to connect with these two containers because it is uh, attached to a different bridge and it will not be able to uh, talk to these uh, containers. So that is the, uh, that is the, uh, network topology or that is how it is built uh, how you can build a network communication between two different containers and how you can use it um, so given that you know i did talk about one thing which uh, which is very important here as well uh, from a network architecture perspective um, you know sorry docker architecture perspective right i can have a client in one of the boxes and i can have docker daemon in another block box uh, not necessarily it has to be on the same uh, same machine it can it can be on two different machines you can set up a secured connection between these two um, services and you can uh, send in the uh, api request to the docker daemons from uh, the other box to another box so this can be done and this is also uh, is a secured way of communication as well so you know just keep in mind it, it it's not necessary all these components which is the client docker host registry has to be on the same box registry can be on the public cloud like the azure container registry docker host can be on the same uh, you know it can be on a one box and client can be on the other box where it can interact so that's the crux of it and uh, let me come back to the networking uh, so i did we did see this um, now it's easy to exit as well just type in exit uh, from the docker where we had logged in and you 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 would exit from that okay 
So this is how you can actually log into Docker and run a couple of uh, commands on it. Uh, anytime you use uh, hyphen IT, which is an interactive mode, um, you can log into the server, you know, you can log into the Docker and execute commands and other things uh, for uh, various reasons. You know, as a as a DevOps engineer, you might do it. Uh, not, it's not recommended. Uh, that is one more uh, thing which is uh, which I just want to call out. So this is what we did, and we also did inspection and other things. So, but the most important thing as well was to see the port mapping. Uh, I'll show you how uh, port mapping also works. Um, so let me go back uh, to my terminal and key in. So Docker container uh, run is having a name, web, and network. Uh, local network it's I'm publishing uh, so this publish command is there right so it is mapping uh, port 80 within the container to uh, 5000 uh, within the external to container okay so okay so there is there is a question called sh sh is a default like bash it's a default for alf uh, alf in uh, uh, os so in, if you're using Ubuntu, you would type in bash. That's it. So it's just that uh, I'm logging in for bash or for SH is SH is nothing but shell. OK, so there was one question. Uh, I just wanted to answer that. So uh, this is 80 and uh, this is 5000. Uh, 5000 is external, 80 is to the container. Uh, so let us go and publish on the same network which we created network locally and this is nothing but a nginx uh, which we are running and you can see that uh, it's already started uh, the reason behind that was it was done before so it was there the image was there uh, the nginx image was uh, i had already you know downloaded it otherwise it would take some time to uh, execute that so let me show you the how exactly it is connecting. So this is how Nginx is coming up, right? So, so if you see this, um, Nginx is running here uh, with with the 5000 port. Uh, this is 5000 port, which is my uh, laptop, which is connecting to the containers 80 port. Uh, that is what uh, the command is. Docker container run in a background mode. Hyphen D is a call for the background mode. Uh, if I don't give background mode, um, it would keep running here and I will be seeing all the things here running. So I'm just giving it in the background mode or the you know, detached mode. And uh, this is the name of the uh, container and network and then publish and then Nginx. Nginx is nothing but the container which I want to uh, download and run. So this is anyways get searched in the Docker Hub uh, whenever you are using a common one. If not, you might have to download it from your registry and give the give the name which was given to it when when you downloaded it, right? So this is this is uh, this is how you can use the port um, as well. So let me show you port web uh, what it is Docker port. So when you go to the Docker port and web web is nothing but the name of the container which we had given when we run that right this is the name of the container so when i go to docker port web so there is you know this is what it shows you so this is the docker port which is connecting on a local host to the 5000 port of your system okay so this is uh, this is the um, overall view of it um let me we did containers on cloud, so I don't want to uh, go in depth into that. We did show how to deploy it on the uh, Azure container instance and all those things. A um, couple of other things uh, which I might want to cover is um, is the cloud kill challenge, uh, which was there uh, before that. Here is one thing. Yeah, cloud scale challenge was here. Okay, so there is a cloud scale challenge. If you check in, you'll get the cloud scale challenge link, and I will also, anyways, post this uh, link for you. And uh, when you go to this, it has in depth uh, 
you know, these are hand-picked learn modules with uh, into, from a Linux perspective to Docker containers, building it and other things. And uh, you can see that, you know, I've also, in, you know, get, you know, picked uh, container registries and in Azure container instance, how to do it. Uh, some of the app service and other things, and then introduction to Kubernetes as well, which is which we are going to do it uh, next few weeks, um, which is going, we are going to take care of that as well. So this is this is actually running. This takes 15 hours to complete. There are 22 modules, uh, but it, these modules are all small. If you see, this is 16 minutes and 50 minutes and 30 minutes. So you know you can really plan out uh, that specific uh time uh, whenever you're free and just run those things uh and any questions out there uh i can take a couple of questions okay there are questions in the chat okay Okay, there is ASP.NET web app. Please let have one demo of this. Yes. Um, so we have sessions for that. Uh, we did a session for that as well uh, for my web app, uh, .NET Core web app. Uh, we did a, a workshop a few weeks back, two to three weeks back. Um, if you go to the uh, Reactor YouTube channel, you will be able to uh, get that access to that uh, specific uh, workshop, which is there. It was done last like last two to three weeks back from Amta. So I didn't get uh, the question promote why other images um, to explain the Docker pool. Okay, he has answered. Answer, okay, uh, if okay, SH we did answer the SH. Uh, uh, what is what are what was the difference between the two containers? Um, which can okay that is to um you know the you know to, uh, okay let me show you that so when i log into the other container right, so when i ping the ping them right so that is the reason why i used two containers uh, just to show you how uh, these two containers are using the same uh, bridge. So that is the reason. Um, how to run the Spring Preview version using Function App in Azure? So, uh, so you have to go to the java function app um, and uh, set up this the structure uh, for the spring boot but i would i would recommend you to use if you're using a uh, spring uh, i would recommend you to use azure spring cloud itself because uh, the main purpose of uh, spring uh, spring uh, boot app uh, or, or the spring uh, framework is is to build very scalable microservice applications. So when you build a scalable microservice applications, uh, you have those, um, you know, uh, distributed tracing, the application monitoring system, and various other things which is required. So those things, anyways, um, come into picture. Okay, network. Okay. Open JDK is required. If I had not downloaded it, it would it would not download. Uh, if I had clean slate, uh, can we deploy Scalar Jar in Azure DevOps using Docker? Yes, you can. We will do it. Not Java specific, but um, we will definitely show you how to use DevOps, uh, Azure DevOps, uh, using Docker pipeline and other things. Uh, incoming few sessions, which is there. Uh, we will do the demo of that and we will take take a closer look at that one. Okay, do we have any video for CICT pipeline on AKS with Spring Boot? Okay, there is no um, CICT pipeline, but there is uh, CICT 
pipeline for AKS. There is a video, there is GitHub actions we did uh, specifically for AKS. Uh, you can extend it to Spring Cloud. You know, Spring Cloud is nothing but a container. And I think there is one video in the Azure developer community, not on the reactor community. But if you go to the Azure developer community, uh, I have done um, a Spring Cloud um, built on uh, Azure uh, Kubernetes service, um, Spring, Spring Boot app uh, built on Azure Kubernetes service. And you can basically use that and build your GitHub Actions uh, to build a CICD pipeline for that. And for GitHub Actions, you come to come back to the Reactor, um, uh, Reactor YouTube channel. We have a GitHub Actions series for Azure. Uh, we did uh, in the Azure Happy Hour a uh, few a uh, few days back, like few, oh no, let's say one month back. Yes, I'll I'll do the I'll bring you the link. This one. This is the link, right? Um I ping. Cannot go. Oh, I cannot do it here. Let me ping that for you. It's very simple. Start dot uh, start dot spring dot io. Yes, you can. You can deploy it in Nexus repo as well. Uh, there is a question like. Can we deploy Docker image in the Nexus repo? Yes, you can. Jayesh has a good question. What is the roadmap uh, to become a DevOps engineer? We did discuss a couple of things. Um, we are having a Twitter space on 29th from a skill perspective. Uh, I have invited a couple of um, um, DevOps, um, you know, architects and uh, CTOs and other people uh, to talk about the skills which is required. Do follow me on my Twitter. Um, once you follow me on my Twitter, you'll, you'll get the you know space uh, when we create that space. Uh, we can definitely go back and chat about it. Uh, like what are the skill sets uh, which is required for a DevOps engineer? But from a roadmap perspective, right? Uh, as I told you, this is heavily on uh, if you see this. Uh, this specific diagram itself, right? Uh, there is source code control, so you need to understand GitHub. Um, you need to understand uh, how Linux work, and because most of the things are on Linux, and you need to understand uh, build and release pipelines. What are those build and release pipelines which is required? And then this today's topic, which is container image, container registry, networking within the containers, and which will also, you know. No, uh, we don't because uh, we are going to use Kubernetes, right? So that is something which we are going to use. Uh, understanding of Kubernetes from an administrative perspective, monitoring tools like Grafana, Prometheus, Azure monitoring, cloud monitoring tools, and different kind of policies which is there to release your product. Those are the things where you need to understand. So I've, I've covered a couple of things, but obviously, uh, if you go to my uh, GitHub repo, there is uh, other things which is required. Uh, to become a DevOps engineer, right? So there is leadership, there is communications, there is uh, skills which is uh, you know where you go and uh, influence people and other things. So there are a couple of books uh, which I noted in my GitHub repo. So you can go back and uh, take a look at that as well. Jayesh. So how are we handling the HTTPS and SSL in containers? So we will come back to that. Um, I specifically, you know, did not do two things because of the time and uh, and various things. Uh, one is the volumes uh, because I'm going to use it with Kubernetes, um, and the security-wise as well. I'm going to use it with Kubernetes. And from uh, SSL perspective of the having it on registry and using with. Uh, you know, scanning and other things which is there, which is this part of it. You see this, uh, this part of it. Uh, we will do that specific demo of that uh, in the last session uh, which we have. 
where we put everything together and execute and see how it how it looks. So there are. If you go to my uh, GitHub repo, uh, you have my own uh, YouTube channel, but I keep adding the same video which I do here at the reactor or at the community. Um, I would say do follow Azure Developer Community and uh, Reactor uh, YouTube channel. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, amazing channels. If you want, I can note it down and give it to you if you want. I do follow a couple of them. Yeah, you need the GitHub repo. OK, let me share all the links uh, which I have. Um, so GitHub repo, LinkedIn, my events, everything I'm sharing here. Do the now please uh, take a look at the cloud skill challenge as well. Okay. For Nexus repo, we don't have a video. Um, that's something which is not there. Probably uh, I'll take this as an input and see how we can use that. Uh, I'll probably do a demo or probably put it on my GitHub repo as a kind of a blog post or something for you to helpful if it is helpful for you. Any other questions we have? Okay, full stack experience, full stack developer, I'm following Docker and communities. Do to skills also, I'm um, do to skills addition is fit in the with my existing skills. Yes, of course. I you know. Um, See if you see there is uh, Docker is obviously uh, some of the things are developer specific, and nowadays it's almost like a developer specific, right? And uh, Kubernetes has two parts to it, right? If you, if you see uh, their certification itself is a Docker developer, sorry Kubernetes developer certification, and there is administrator certification, and then there is a security uh, certification. There are three different kinds of certifications which Kubernetes has, so. Definitely understanding of all these technologies, understanding uh, hands on understanding of these technologies, hands on understanding of uh, what internals of these things is um, is very, very helpful for you to grow as an architect. Uh, the difference between an architect and a developer is, you know, uh, a developer can go back and you know build something and use something. Uh, which is out there, but an architect is a person who decides which one to use, all right? Which you know, which architecture to use, which are those tools to use, which of those uh, strategies to use uh, to to build a scalable product. So, to grow from a, just a full stack developer to an architect full stack, you need to understand the whole uh, ecosystem of the technologies will, which will be used. Um, in an enterprise, in a startup, in a different uh, industries. Definitely it is required. Is it possible to run multiple apps in a single Docker container? Yes, you can, you know, it's, it's I mean, it's not a, um, you, you can use Docker Compose. Uh, there is something called as Docker Compose to, um, run multiple you know, containers in it, uh, but the whole purpose of uh, breaking this down into a single application is to make sure it is uh, used. Um, it's you, it's it's more usable and it does not break in the production. But I would suggest you to build it in such a way um, that if you if if you're looking at monolithic application, right? Uh, it's it's obviously it is running a large uh, system in it. Uh, but if you're looking at um, you know, microservice application, you just need to break it down into smaller pieces. When you say multiple uh, apps, you know, the again, 
the entry point and the exit, the um, uh, the output of this is only one application, right? So if you see this, the example which we showed on the on the uh, on the uh, you know Azure uh, container instance, which is there, uh, we did see this. It's it's only one one output. So purpose is only one, but if you want to combine it, you can use Docker Composer, and that is why that is the reason why Kubernetes is, is so famous, where it, it is an orchestrator. It orchestrates all these multiple uh, containers which is there. You might have uh, some hundreds or 50 containers uh, for running your application, seven to eight applications or 10 applications. For all that, you are using the um, you are using the Kubernetes to orchestrate instead of uh, single handedly handling the containers. Any more questions? Uh, if you have, I mean, like, oh, it's everybody's uh, muted, is it? So, so that oh, you can you can unmute and ask questions uh, as well. Sorry for my network today. There's some issue, but do check in. Don't forget to check in if you have not checked in yet. Uh, do check in and definitely take up this cloud skill challenge, which is there, um, which has all these modules. I have curated all the modules, all the learn modules, and it is with a sandbox, by the way. So, all these uh, things which I'm doing hands on and pushing code to um, uh, pushing code to the uh, Azure, right? It's, uh, there is already a sandbox. Is there any more questions? Uh, if there are more questions, just unmute yourself uh, and ask those questions or else um, do let me know uh, what all things we can cover uh, in next few sessions and we can definitely try and see if we can cover all those things. I know this was a very long session uh, with all the problems we had in the network. Uh, okay, make one quick question. Is there a, a follow up session for this after this? Yes. Um, let me share you the. There is there is eight sessions which is planned for this specific uh, DevOps series. Uh, the next session is more about understanding cloud uh, and understanding different things which are required from a DevOps perspective. Um, it's Azure fundamental for developers. Sorry, DevOps engineers. Um, it's on 1st October. You can you can sign up here, which I have shared the link. And then there is Kubernetes for all on 8th uh, October, which I'm uh, trying to cover almost everything in Kubernetes. I know it is not possible in one session. Um, I'll try and make sure that um, we do definitely do uh, the YAML building. Uh, we will build a YAML. Uh, and also we'll try and understand um, the other parts of it, the deployment part of it and various other things which is there, uh, which are slightly advanced uh, communities, but uh, that is the reason why I'm uh, you know, sharing this cloud skill challenge where all these, uh, you can, there is 53 minutes, we can, you can just go through what is Kubernetes and other things. And we will, if, anyways, we will do all these things. Uh, we'll cover all these things when we um, do the uh, session, but will it will be more. In fact, uh, if you see the GitHub repo, right, you can see we will try and cover namespaces, policies, and load balancers and other things. So I'm uh, that is the reason why I'm not covered the volumes in uh, volumes and secrets in uh, Docker. Uh, because anyways, we are going to use Kubernetes, and I just want to make sure that we don't confuse ourselves. So, any other questions we have? Yes, uh, it's basically a Mac. 
uh, Docker in in Linux, correct? Uh, but Docker desktop for Windows, um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not planned to do it. Uh, but if you're looking for that, um, you know what I create a small demo of it, um, or uh, build a demo of that, and uh, I will publish it in my um, uh, in my GitHub repo for people to go and take a look at it as part of the resources. So if you are following my GitHub repo, uh, you'll get all these uh, resources which is there. Uh, I'll keep this as one of the backlog um, and then I'll, I'll add there. Thanks for uh, suggesting that and it's a good one uh, because now there is a subscription added to the Docker uh, desktop. There's a lot of changes coming in. So any more questions? No more questions. So do uh, provide the you know survey link. There is a survey link which Rashmita is showing. Um, you know, definitely um, very important for us because we need to understand what other sessions you are looking for. And then there is check-in. Uh, do check in uh, so that you get all the access to the cloud scale challenge and github repo and other things which i just uh, talked about um, i think Rishwita, we can uh, close the session if there are no sure. more yeah. yeah thank you vivek so much for the session and thank you all for joining us today please feel free to do event check in and please share your feedback about today's session it will help us to choose our topics better also, please visit our Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru meetup page for more upcoming session. We have an interesting workshop tomorrow starting at 10. Please uh, do come and watch the session tomorrow. It would be an amazing session uh, by Mamta. And thank you all once again and enjoy rest of your day.